bed or cruises, baby. <laughs> and he just made a bunch of them and won. I mean, battle cruises are pretty good. They're the ultimate weapon for a reason. But we have spawning up in the top right for Dragon Kitesy Gaming. It is Hero. Look at these passionate nerds over here in Atlanta already showing up. The doors opened like five minutes ago and they're already here because they know obviously that this is going to be our first match here on the main stage. In the bottom left side, we are looking at the main base of one of the most successful Starcraft 2 players in the rich history of this video game. It's on site, Gaming Maru. And I'm looking at his EPT points total right there. He's living in the future, 2025. Very neat. Yeah. Maybe he's going to win the world championship there. We'll see. But that explains now, why he's so good at the video game stat fest. Yes. Yeah. It's specifically because of the EPT points he got. It's uh, it's a real chicken or the egg thing. But, uh, you know, both of them were already a hatched chicken. Uh, just <laughs> uh, what do you make of this double gas we got from Hero? That is a bit weird, but he's not fully saturating it, so I assume that he's still just gonna go for a very quick expand. Sometimes Rose but it's just like to go about things in the early game a little bit different, and it doesn't mean all that much. There is a world, obviously, where if this is a minor online tournament, I'm like, ah, I can see Hero do a weird one base only with a proxy stock and a couple shield batteries. I don't believe that's the kind of stuff you do on Do or Die Saturday, which is not something we normally even say, but ah. Rachel already said it. Anyone who loses here today on the main stage has to go home. And it's too early for either of these nerds to go home. So I do expect them to really bring out their A-builds. Don't think we're gonna see too many weird shenanigans. Honestly, I think Maru's gonna play Battle Cruises here, Statfest. And obviously you can just be like, I wanna play BCs and I don't care what you do. I want to go into battle cruises as quickly as possible. Maru has to scout. Maru has to adjust what Hero is going to throw at him. But I believe that Maru's overall game plan is not going to be kill Hero early. It is going to be survive, scout, analyze, and find a safe way to get into battle cruises. And I think it's it's a super valid strategy on Rad Huset. Like it's this map plays differently than anything we've had in the competitive map pool for a very long time. And I'm really interested to see how the two players approach it. You did mention, obviously, you know, Maru is one of those players that's very comfortable in the late game. Hero, it's not that he's bad in the late game, it's that he is really passionate about his Blink Stalkers. He <laughs> loves those Blink Stalkers more than anything. Yeah, Hero just loves to fight. Yeah. Hero is a guy that I think has maybe HDHD when he's playing, and if there's nothing happening for three minutes, he's like, brr, 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 I want to go to the other side of the map and kill some stuff, and even if it's a bad trade, I don't care, I need to trade <laughs> anything. What I do like to see, though, is that Hero has gone for the Stargate here in the very first game of the day. Makes me happy. I think this is the ultimate Stargate map. If you don't go Stargate, it actually becomes pretty hard as a Protoss to scout as well. Sure, you got a Sentry. You can make that Hallucinated Phoenix. You can make Hallucinated Oracle. But obviously, those die a little bit quicker. I just think it makes a lot of sense to go Stargate here. Otherwise, everything that makes this map great for Protoss suddenly makes this map pretty good for Terran with all the dead airspace around the two, three base setups. And it can just become very hard for Hero to really get where he wants to go. So, couple Phoenixes. Now, the real question is, are we going to play Phoenix Robo or will it be Phoenix Twilight? That is a good question. But what I'm interested in right now is the potential of the mind game from Hero. So, Hero opened up with that early extra gas, even though he didn't fully saturate it right away, it did give him a little bit more than normal. Maru did not SCV scout, and with Maru seeing a hallucinated uh, Phoenix, seeing Stalker, Stalker, Sentry, I don't think he's anticipating the Stargate. This is not a huge commitment, but two Phoenixes should be able to shut this down, and this should be a great start. The only thing is if he thinks there's more than one Cyclone here, but if he gets the pickoff, this is a pretty amazing start for Hero. Yeah, five minutes in. I think that Medivac is absolutely going to fall. That Cyclone is going to get lifted as well, oh. and Hero indeed has the dream start. But I think the most important thing is that first is what you mentioned. It's not a big investment. Yes. Maru didn't really bank on the fact that this Cyclone was going to do a whole lot. He just kind of wanted to scout and maybe get a lock on one of the first target units. Turned out there was a little bit more. Maru is not super happy. But this is something I think he can recover from, and I can't imagine that he did not expect, at least there, there was a lot high likelihood that we were going to see a couple of Phoenixes. Now, Maru's gonna do Maru things, and he sees a bunch of Phoenix, and he says, you know what I should really do here? <laughs> Make a Raven. Eh? Some people might be confused about that. I've always been confused about it. But Maru is very good in keeping them alive. This game, though, I kind of feel like it's a throwaway Raven, right? 
We're just waiting to see once these Phoenixes show up on Maru's side of the map, as we can take a little look at that first person view. As stats fast, we are aiming so high right now, I don't think I've ever been this high. <laughs> Never in my life have I been aiming as high as we have today. And yeah, we've uh, we've got both players using those flying units right there, showing uh, a lot of love for the US Air Force. And uh, wow, this is something I didn't expect. Maru uses, that's that's black on his, uh, his structures, yeah? That's that's interesting. Or is that dark gray? Dark yeah, I gray. I think it's kind of dark gray. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's kind of neat. I I don't think I've seen players use that before. Ah, this is kind of nice though from Hero. He does have stalkers in position, but Maru is going to be able to target down three probes. Obviously, like you said, this is a throwaway Raven. Mm -hmm. But considering it's a throwaway, eh, three probes, you could do a lot worse. You could do a lot worse, but you also think, like, isn't there something better that you can get out of that starport initially, right? Honestly, I yeah. think I would be happier with a Liberator that just sits at home and sieges up somewhere to make sure that Zealots are not going to run in later on. We did obviously see Hero go up to four gases very quickly, even before he dropped that Robo. But at that point, we already knew that he was going to play Phoenix Colossus. Maru obviously does not feel that this is the kind of map where, hey, maybe we can keep that Raven alive. Maybe I should research interference matrix and I can drop that matrix on the other side of the map. Now, Maru just said, all right, I already made the investment. The starport was already busy building this Raven. I'm just going to make it. I'm going to fly in. I hope that your reaction time is slow. And then I get a few more uh, kills than I'm supposed to get. But this setup to me already kind of tells me that Maru knows it's so hard to hit any sort of a timing on this map, and he's just going to turtle up. Got a whole bunch of tanks. A small chance that maybe we make a nice bio push, right? With like some 1-1 one -one upgrades, a bunch of tanks, and if we can keep Hero contained on four, on three bases, that's obviously a pretty good scenario for Maru. I think it will always be so damn difficult for Maru to kill Hero on the three base setup that Hero is working with, and especially because we already see that fleet beam go down, that second Stargate go down. So if Maru makes a very committed tank push, Hero can actually make Tempest. Even if he doesn't, didn't plan on building Tempest this early, Tempest are one of the best defensive units you can ever make in almost every scenario. And if you already have the access to it, yeah, why would you be worried about a tank push? Yeah, and uh, Hero really prioritized his air upgrades here. He delayed that forge significantly in order to get really fast plus one air weapons and get straight into those carriers. And I mean, you talked about the battle cruisers of Maru, but Hero says, eh, okay, I can, I like fighting, but you know, I can, I also like money. And uh, I would like to win this map on Rad, who said it's, it's honestly a great setup for Hero so far. The resources lost, it's not huge, but- Nothing has happened. <laughs> not a whole lot, but all the little trades have still gone in the favor. And that's discouraged Maru from if he did want to push out on this super massive map, it's discouraged that down to about zero. Look at Maru, not one, but two command centers going down. We've got the Ghost Academy going down as well. You already said it, we don't have another map like Ratu said. So the yep. builds that we see here, the slow pace that we see between these two, that's all out of the window the moment we hop into game two, three, four, five. Yes. Hero does have another scout. He's going to see the reactor at the uh, starport. We'll expect, obviously, a couple of Vikings to be produced. Wonder if Maru is still thinking about some sort of a move out. Like, this army right now does not do that bad. We throw down a scan on the side of Maru in the main base of Hero. He sees the carrier. He sees the mothership as well, because I think that's a pretty obvious animation. Yeah. But, like, what do you do? Do you move out with a couple of Vikings? I don't think so. And Maru is absolutely not going to do that. He said, nope. You go up to four bases. I'll go up to four bases, and we'll just take it from there. The extra starport's already going down. Honestly, in a weird way, I am a tiny bit concerned for Hero, because you look at the work accounts, a 73 against 71. Like, it's not that Hero has really taken advantage of the fact that Terran cannot slow the Protoss down, right? Like, what has he really done with that kind of advantage? To me, it kind of feels that Hero has been a little bit nervous all game long, where he's like, oh, this is a really good Protoss map, really good Protoss map. I just yeah. want to make sure that I don't die to something silly. But by playing it that cautious and somewhat slow, he's honestly not ahead entering the early mid-game of this uh, TVP. Yeah, he's teched in a lot of different directions at once, and he's, he's kept his gateway count relatively low, so he's, he's gotten a lot of his bang for his buck in terms of uh, really just spreading his tech around. But Maru's kind of done a similar thing. He's focused a little bit more on economy, but, I mean, this is... The, and obviously infrastructure with these additional starports, but this is uh, this is pretty interesting. And ooh, you talked about the BCs. 
Those are not reactors. Those are tech labs, and we got a fusion core. Yep, we've got that fusion core. And of course, we can get some liberators later on as well with advanced ballistics. If Hero goes heavier into the ground, then he's going into Skytos. But Maru loves battle cruises on this map. We've often said it in the past. RBC is good against Protoss. Well, people are like, oh, they kind of suck. And then you have the people like, well, they're kind of invincible if you get a whole bunch of them. I think the truth is somewhere in the middle. I think battle cruises have potential, especially with Yamato against some of these high HP Protoss units. It's just often if Terra player wants to go into BCs, they are just behind. They're gonna get contained on whether it's two bases or three bases. And obviously BCs are very expensive units. It's just costing an immense amount of resources to get all these upgrades, the fusion core, the extra star ports, and the amount of time for normally a BC to show up as well is simply a little bit too long in high level StarCraft. But on this map, we already said it, all your regular timings are out of the window. I I don't know how you feel about it, Statwes, and I would love to hear your honest opinion. But 12 minutes into this game, I like it more for Maru than I like it for Hero. I... If nothing else happens, yes. But what I'm looking for, the play I'm looking for Hero to make, is a Mothership Recall into that back pocket base. That's what I'm looking for. The only thing about that is that he won't have, like, Charge, for example. He is going to have Storm. He's got plus two air weapons. And this could be a very deadly push if he ends up going for this. Besides that, I think I do agree with you. We still have five tanks, though. Don't forget about that. We have five tanks. We have a couple of ghosts as well. Smaro's going to pick up a few units. This is going to be really annoying for Hero, who did not have control of the Zelnaga Watchtower, as Maru had control of it with the Cyclone. And two cannons and a battery is not enough, so Hero might actually be forced to use a defensive recall. I would not ignore this if I was Hero. I really think you have to recall or at least warp in a whole bunch of units. Maru is going to go for that battery. Warps in a Stalker. Hero is going to float over his carriers, I believe, right, based on the minimap movement. Oh. And we do have that mother ship thinking about it and as much as I love this plan by hero there is a problem with this plan and the problem is that if you recall in you can't really recall out anymore because his army is too big to get completely recalled yeah uh, that is definitely a problem he can split it in theory because obviously a little bit of his army is watched not a little bit he's got 10 carriers a lot of his army could theoretically just fly out but it is one of those situations that gets very dangerous Vikings were on the hunt for that mothership but Hero had pulled it back. He didn't want to just leave it there on its lonesome. And both players are going to kind of continue to power up for the time being. One problem for Maru, obviously, is that he still has a whole bunch of Marauders. And okay, Hero has a decent amount of uh, units, but the 10 carriers are the only thing that's really scary for Maru. If all 10 carriers are able to deploy their interceptors, yeah, then I think Maru is still going to have a tough time because at this point he doesn't have the Dream Army yet. And a lot of the supply is still being built. I love the addition of eight missile turrets at once. I also think sometimes you can just let a command center die. This game will not be won or lost at a single command center as we're gonna go for that oh. pilot and that both pilot is going to unpower triple cannon and the batteries the other kids the other cannons get unpowered as well and hero is forced to recall at least a part of his army maru is doing a 10 out of 10 job right now in a trading out some supply and b buying more time for those good old battle cruises baby yeah that's twice now that hero clearly wanted to make a move on the map and maru checked it speaking of those battle cruises i see a little blue blob on the bottom of the map Four BCs yep. making their way through. What scares me about this is the moment that Hero sees this, he has no more Rico. Hero is going to say, F it. You know what? Not yeah. bad enough, Maru. And if Hero can deploy all these interceptors and plus three air weapons is done 14 minutes into the game. I mean, I've uh, complained about the lack of Protoss air upgrades for the last 12 years of my, <laughs> of my casting career, but I got to give it uh, to Hero. He knows how important those are. He just went for it. And at this point, Hero is going to go for it. We have a decent amount of missile turrets, but this many characters will always be very difficult to deal with. That they will. We do see the recall coming on in. Nice time warp on top of the Vikings. The storm is huge on top of the Vikings as well. Will this be enough for the BCs to manage to take down the carriers? I don't think so. The BCs kind of being forced to fight away Vikings from the Vikings, so, but the Vikings coming in on the top side. However, they are so low on HP, they're going to melt in the face of those plus three carriers. Both players losing so much, but the lack of a war prism to reinforce is really the big problem for Hero. Yep, and uh, yeah, he has a couple of gateway units and obviously could have made a bit of a difference, but in the end, it's a bit of a trade. Maru lost a lot, Hero lost a lot. Maru absolutely needed all those missile turrets, because without the missile turrets, he would not have stand a chance there. But one big issue for Maru, by the way, is that A, obviously he did not 
have those extra air upgrades yet. So he was pretty far down in the air upgrades. And the bigger problem was that at the beginning of that fight, Yamato wasn't done yet. I want Yamato to prison here, by the way. Maybe teleport home. I don't know if he can teleport home. PCs are very expensive to repair. We don't have those turrets anymore. And the stalkers are the real issue right now, Statfest. Yeah, and we got seven Vikings left over. Obviously, they're going to be nice against the Colossus, but there's no bio on the field. Maru desperately scrambling to get some out. He's still building Vikings. He doesn't need Vikings. He needs to deal with this stalker force that has that plus three upgrades. Big blink forward in on top of the VCs. One goes down, two go down. Maru is in massive trouble. And Hero, it all comes back to the blink stalkers, baby. Yep, even if the map is not perfect for them, you can always open up with a bunch of carriers, then go back into the stalkers. But Hero's not there yet, Statfest. Hero has also spent his entire piggy bank, and he's very stalker heavy now. And stalkers are going to have a very hard time walking into a Terran main base on top of all those barracks that can still crank out bio. We've got plus three on the bio units. Maru obviously is in some economic issues right now, because going back to the initial three bases, 17 minutes into the game, that is the biggest problem. Hero's army, I don't think, is invincible. Maro is just kind of broke at this point, and he's still building these very expensive units. The Vikings, though, are going to try to go for two carriers in the middle oh. of the map. Oh, he no. kind of underestimated how long that one carrier would live. In the end, Maru does get both of them. I want to see what Hero's doing with his gateway army. He's just getting every single orbital. Yeah, there is not a whole lot left for Maru. Even if he does manage to stabilize, he's lost so much at this point. Hero is super far ahead in both workers and supply. Army supply is obviously not amazing, but we, and actually, you know, a big deal, it is 3-3 versus 3-0, soon to be 3-1. So if Maru can stabilize, his bio units are a lot better, but Hero is on a massive base count advantage. And he lost so many SUVs. He lost a bunch of orbitals as well. This is just the biggest problem for Maru at this point. And he's now adding in a few Widow Mines. I really think if he had three or four Widow Mines early, and he would have killed the Observers always, right, with all the Vikings and the BCs. I think it all could have gone a lot better for Maru. Let's see how well this upgraded bio can shine here as we do take out the War Prism, but it's the Zalos that get on top of the Marauders. That is going to be good enough. Just like that, it's the reigning champion of the ESL Masters here in Atlanta. That's going to take the 1-0 lead after a bit of a messy game on the Rati set. We had a slow build-up, we had a big epic fight that you can take on the, or you can take a picture of and put it on the cover of his Tucker to make yeah. in. Looked cool, unfortunate for Maru, because I think Maru was so close to where he wanted to get, but he was forced to take that fight without plus three for his ship weapons, without an extra armor upgrade. As we can take another look, keep your eye on the production tab in the top left side. And even those BCs that teleported home, they did not have Yamato yet. This fight looks so different if you can start it off with six or seven Yamatos from all the battle cruises that Maru had. Absolutely. I do want to point something out, though. The mothership was able to get that crucial time warp, and the uh, High Templar got some massive storms on the Vikings. Now, the carriers didn't win the fight, but they did manage to whittle that Viking count down a ton. And those Vikings are so expensive to replace. Obviously, the carriers are as well, but I don't know. It always feels like when I watch the Viking versus carrier interaction, mm -hmm. and the the Vikings are, even for like three or four seconds, they're getting hit by those carriers. It feels like they just melt. And when the HP is that low, you know, we have those autumn Vikings with the, the orange and the red HP. They just get absolutely melted. And Hero was able to rebuild hell of a lot faster, and he ends up taking game one. What I would have loved to see, and obviously this is in hindsight, looking at how the game played out, looking where Hero first went, and then what the follow-up plan was for Hero, is that instead of having those five tanks on Maru's side, if he had two or three tanks, but then he had a bunch of Widow Mines scattered across those missile turrets, it is incredibly hard to keep detection there as a Protoss. He did not have an Oracle, obviously, so the only thing you really have are Observers. Well, Observers staying alive against that many BCs, Vikings, missile turrets, is almost never going to happen. And if you can then survive with your Widow Mines, until they can fire again, so they get two full volleys off. I really think Maru would not have lost those SCVs. He would have not lost those orbitals. And Hero was as about as committed as a Protoss player could be. Yes, he has the gold, but he's now maxing out on Stalkers with zero armor upgrades against 3-3 Bio. Like, that looked one-sided, but I actually think it was very close. It was extremely close. No, I got to agree. Uh, we are going to be getting into game number two on Site Delta. Spawning up in the top left, he's up 1-0 in the series. It is Dragon Kaisi Gaming's hero. And his opponent, spawning down in the bottom right for Onside Gaming. 
He needs your energy. It's Maru! Good news for all the Maru fans out there is that this obviously is a best of five. And yes, with the nine maps, you're always going to be forced to play on one weird map. From here on out, it's going to be a lot more standard. I think Maru has loved Side Delta ever since this uh, map pool got introduced. And in the beginning, Terra players always kind of wondered like, okay, what map should we pick against Zerg, against Protoss? What do we love the most? And at first, not all the Terran players were necessarily on the same page that Side Delta is the map they should pick. But Maru, from the very first day, made it pretty obvious that if he ever had map choice, this is the one map that he wants to play on, whether it's against Zerg or Protoss. Maru does strike me as that kind of ride or die, you know? He's like, he decides on uh, on someone or, or something or a map, and he sticks with it. He says, you know what? No. But I, so, I, I, oh, I sorry, go ahead. I don't think he's wrong, though. I think it's a great Terran map. And I looked at it in the beginning as well, and I was like, if I was a Terran player, I think I love Side Delta. And then some of the Terrans were like, oh, it's a bit hard. There's too many run-by potential for the Zerklings, and it's hard to stabilize on four bases. And I was like, yeah, but it has all the characteristics of what makes a great Terran map. You yeah. can have a tank in your main that keeps your third base and your natural safe. You have a lot of great tank spots throughout the center. You can take out some rocks, which makes it a little bit easier to go for some of these parade pushes. I'm very curious to see where this game is going to go, because everything we saw in that previous game doesn't really matter. Maru already aware of the fact that this is going to be a Twilight Council upgrade, or at least a tech opening on the side of Hero, and most likely we're well, going to see that Blink being upgraded out of the Twilight Council. I feel like Maru should be experienced enough at this point not to falter against the Blink Stalker aggression from Hero. No, certainly not. I mean, obviously Hero is one of the... Not necessarily best pure Blink stalker, stalker micros in the game, but he is absolutely one of the best players at utilizing Blink Stalkers. But Maru, of course, is going to be used to that. He is going to be well-practiced against it. Still, uh, there's always an opportunity for Hero to find an opening. Now, this is not the previous map pool. This is not a map pool where we had Ancient Cistern and Dragon Scales and a ton of these very four-gate Blink Stalker maps. But up 1-0 in the series, there's always a chance we could see something like that. Yep. There's also a good chance that Heroes just says, like, no, we're not going to be too aggressive. Let's go for the safe one, the three-gate. You can obviously go two-gate Robo Blink and go up to three bases as a Protoss, but it's a little bit risky, especially against a man like Maru, who is incredibly good oh. at playing like he is Big Gabriel. But after this, Hellion goes deep into the main base, Hero says, you know what, let's just get one more. Why stay on three gate raids if I can go up to four? And four does kind of scream aggression. It does. It does. And even though I mentioned, you know, Hero as that Blink Stalker player, he actually doesn't go for the four gate Blink Stalkers as often as many of his contemporaries, especially on the previous patch. So this was a great little mind game. This was Hero kind of spoon feeding Maru a little bit like, hey, you got in with the Hellion. It's only three gates. Psych. Yeah, but it's still, I want to say, pretty all right for Maru, because the only yeah. thing that Maru has done with the factory so far is he made one Hellion, then he made a single Widowmine. The single Widowmine is actually something that Clem was yes. swore by at one yeah. point. After playing against Max Pax 384 times in the month of August alone, at one point, <laughs> Clem just said, if you want to survive against four gate Blink Stalker, and the Protoss plays it really well, the only thing you can really do with Widowmines is build a single Widowmine. So you have a bit of map presence, you can keep an eye on what's happening on the other side of the map, but most importantly, you can go into tank production ASAP. At this point, though, Maru doesn't quite know yet. He's showing a lot of respect to Hero, while Hero has almost every single unit on the other side of the map. And Hero is going to blink into the natural, get on top of this bunker, and gets it very quickly. Now, there are still a decent amount of Marines, but this tank, Maru, you cannot lose this tank. No, he certainly cannot. That is his only tank for the moment. Maru did F2 the medevac back home, so it's not going in at the moment, despite the fact that Hero committed everything Why? on the map. Big mistake from Maru right there. He could be getting damage on the other side. Both players are supply blocked at 70. There's the blink forward, snipes down the tank. He should be able to get the Raven as well. Great War Prism Micro to start off from Hero. Maru's in so much trouble. Maru's gonna drop the Widow Mine behind this, and he's gonna hope that the oh! Stalk is run into it. And you know what? It's a pretty decent call as he gets a single Stalk. I don't know if that is necessarily good enough. If it was on the War Prism, I would be like, oh my yeah. god, Maru, that's the sickest thing I've ever seen. Or if you get the double kill or the triple kill, but getting a single Stalker, now losing that presence that you have. Like, Hero can just fully focus on all of this Blink Stalker aggression. That 
10 count is Lord. Igmar is oh. in serious trouble as another 10 pump. Oh. He does save it though. Talking about a hot pickup here, Steadfast. That was not a hot pickup. That was the hottest pickup. That was Rojo Caliente right there. Beautiful hot pickup, Micro. Without that, I think he's dead. As it is, he is still in so much trouble. Loses that gas in the main base. The Stalkers get into that little nestled cozy spot behind the mineral line. Siege tank. Oh, hero, you got to be careful. He just used his blink. Uh, still? What a save, man. What a that, save on that. That thing. was as clutch as it gets. Oh, blink for hey, will grab the Raven. I actually would have loved to see Maru just fight this. The Stalkers have just used their blink, and a lot of them are very low in HP, and Maru is going to go ahead and fight this. He got, like, four Stalkers there towards the end, and a Hero honestly not finding as much as I thought he would, mostly because Maru's an absolute stud, but Maru also knows that he's not done yet, and it's just a matter of time that we don't worry about just Stalkers anymore, we have to worry about Zealots too. A lot of these Stalkers are proper low on HP though, they're better than Bruce, they've seen war, they have made some highlights already, so Hero needs to be careful that he doesn't make that one forward blink where suddenly he gets one shot at. He's going up to three bases, a six worker lead is a so-so, not necessarily fantastic, Hero's gonna warp in more charge loss. He, he's not done. He is uh, he is gonna keep committing with this. He prioritized gateway production a little bit more. He's about to be on eight gateways. Charge just finished. We got an immortal showing up. Combat shields is not done. Plus one weapons is not done. Hero is on the verge of potentially running this over, but he hasn't warped in those charge loss yet. Oh, Ooh, so close to losing that warpism. Yeah, okay. Maru, Maru had steam but I think he didn't want to show that he had steam, and he was like, oh, I hope that he overstays his welcome a little bit, so he kind of just moves the Marine forward, and at one point, I kind of wish, I was like, Maru, pull the trigger, steam. If yeah. you steam right now, I actually think you get that war prism. You know, honestly, I'm not loving Hero's spot. Now, that doesn't mean that Hero can't do a whole lot more because he's about to aim on Maru, and that tank is actually on siege. Oh, 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 and that's obviously gonna make life a little bit harder. We do have a couple of Widow Mines sieging up. There's still a safety tank in the back. This is where it gets a little bit scary, but don't forget, these gateway units are 0-0. Zero, zero. Maru has plus one on bio. If Maru can just somehow survive and not lose too many SMBs here, he still has a chance, but those force fields are excellent on the side of Hero. Those were some beautiful force fields right there. Another one catching a few of these units. SCV's trying to be put on hold position. The siege tank in the back is the only thing keeping Maru alive right now, but it is going to work. Two tanks on the high ground. Maru will ultimately stabilize, but the SCV count. 22 SCVs falling to their deaths and a dark shrine behind it. You know Maru's gonna be spamming those people. Oh, one well, tank a little bit exposed. Hero wants that tank. He sees it, he gets it immediately. You gotta give it to Hero, man. He's got some killer instinct. And Maru just picked up four Widow Mines to go to the other side of the map, but he would need a couple of these Widow Mines right now to deal with these extra Zealots. This is all still 0-0 zero, zero on the side of the Protoss. Maru does not have an armory, so these Widow Mine drops are going to be annoying, but not that annoying for Hero to deal with. And that means that Hero can just continue doing his thing. At least Maru spots the Dark Shrine, by the way. So that's a that's a nice little something something. As a couple of stalkers did get warped in. It's four Widow Mines. I think Hero didn't quite expect that many mines to be dropped. He's like, ah, oh, that's the last one, right? Like, Maru's like, oh, I've got one more. Oh. But Maru will leave. Oh. He feels he is just a bit too far behind. 18 workers behind, a base behind. I would have kind of maybe like to see him get one more bio army and go to the other side of the map, pull whatever remaining boys you may have, because there was no splash yet, right? There are no Colossus, there are no High Templars with Storm, there are no Disruptors. Then I always feel that if you have bio, you may as well give it a shot. But obviously Maru in serious trouble after that. Oh, he just, he moved out the split second too early, right? Hero was ready to fully send it with those yep. Immortals, with the Sentries, with the Stalkers, with the Zealots. And right on that moment, Maru thought Hero actually went home. And he lost that tank immediately, and he was just in a bit of trouble. And he was going to, well, somehow stabilize, but just lose way more SMVs than I think otherwise he ever would have, because his army started to look pretty damn good steadfast. Yeah, no, it was starting to look not too bad at all, especially with, like you mentioned, the upgrade differential. And there's that hot pickup that kept Maru in the game for a little bit longer. But I feel like Maru might have looked at the Dark Shrine and realized it was Checkmate. Because I don't, I think he knew with the economy that his opponent had, he knew Hero saved enough probes to continue to spam out charge loss. And he knew that if he can't drop mules, he's not going to be able to keep up. I, that's... That is a 
Sure, but you can always build a single missile turret, right? I just think yeah, yeah, true, true, true. Yeah. And if Hero is too afraid to transition because he knows that Mario is most likely going to attack him, you know, Bio skills are very well against gateway units, and these gateway units won't have any great upgrades. They would maybe have plus one in the end, but it's really not that impactful. I mean, obviously, Mario is in all sorts of trouble there, but I would still like to see him try because this is the knockout bracket. We're not doing some round-robin best of three over here. This is the knockout bracket, Maru. He's down 0-2, needs to win three games in a row against the reigning champ of the DreamHack Masters, Atlanta. Hero just finds a way, Steadfast. He sure does. He is... I wasn't too sure what his form was going to look like because we didn't get to see any of his games no. over here on the A-Stream. And even though we, like, we know, obviously, that Mana, especially in PvP and especially on a really good day, he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best of them. He goes to uh, trade series with max backs pretty evenly. Still, being able to take down Hero, it did leave some question marks. Now I feel like those question marks have been put completely out of my mind. Hero's looking on fire. I'm a little bit sad that Maru brought that Metavac back. I don't understand yeah. because that's one of the most annoying things to deal with as a Protoss player. Whenever you want to be a bit aggressive with the Blink Stalkers, you want to be in the face of the Terran, the one thing you don't want to do is pull your probes away from your own two base yes. economy over and over again because it's just a single Widow Mine. And you do absolutely need to pull the probes away against a single Widow Mine because otherwise Maru is going to target the right probe and you're going to lose four or five probes every single time that bad boy fires. And at the bare minimum, what Maru could have accomplished is that he forces Hero to warp in two Stalkers at home, maybe even three Stalkers at home, just to keep tabs on that Metavac. So maybe I have the idea was to snipe the Prism, sure, 200 IQ, big brain gaming, but I really think that Metavac would have been a lot more useful on the other side of the map. Yeah, I, I have to agree. I, I am confused by the decision making, but I am just a mere mortal compared to these two. Spawning down in the bottom right for Dragon Kites Gaming, he's one map away from knocking out a big rival. It is Hero! Still coughing a little bit. That man has also been a bit under the weather, but it's good to see him playing some amazing Protoss here today. In the top left side of Oceanborn, we are looking at the main base of one of the GOATs in the history of StarCraft II. Representing on-site gaming, he needs your love right now, Atlanta. Give it up for Maru. <laughs> I love it. That is cute. <laughs> love to see that. Got a, a future superstar. You gotta, you gotta start training young. That's how you end up like Clem. Just uh, put a mouse and keyboard in their hands at the age of six, and they can snipe banelings like nobody's business. Uh, we are gonna be seeing a little bit of hesitation from Maru. He started to build that second gas and then stopped. That is not a huge tell. But I will say Maru does feel like one of the more decisive players in general. And it feels like maybe he's second, guess second guessing himself a little bit in game number three here. We're going Marine instead of Reaper. So Marine expand. He's going to drop the CC on the high ground. That's an interesting one. Maybe it's going to lead into one of these Cyclone builds where you can just hit with a couple of Cyclones and a bunch of Marines very early on. Kind of cool here. It's obviously very difficult for Hero to scout because, like, all right, you have your probe on the other side of the map, and you don't want to lose the probes. I believe that the factory is built right next to the barracks, and I guess we're going to do... No, it's actually a bit further in the back. Could still huh. be Cyclones right out of the factory, but just one at a time. We're going to react around some Marines. Interesting opening here by Maru. Not very. Op not opting to go for the Reaper. Has not scouted at all. No, and uh, I don't think he's been scouting much this series. Obviously, he made that Reaper in game number two, spotted the Twilight Council very early. Uh, but no scout on Radhuset. No scout here on Oceanborn. And, I mean, Hero is the kind of player that will not hesitate to drop a second gateway on the map and just go for a kill maneuver. So, I, I mean, down 2-0 in the series, things really haven't gone Maru's way. I don't mind that he doesn't scout, but I wonder if Hero's going to be paying attention for that and might think about something like that if this does go to a game four. Yeah, but in Maro's defense, he's building a CC on the high ground, right? Yes. Even if that would be a second gateway on the other side of the map. I think, if anything, that should be good news for Maro because I don't think that Hero can walk up the ramp over one base Maro and kill him with a couple of stalkers in the depths. I always think that, and then I see Maru or I see Hero do some stuff versus, like, Beyond. I'm like, you shouldn't have been able to do that, and he, he does, but... It, with the high ground CC, it would have been a lot more difficult to get anything done. We are going to be seeing that Twilight Council once again from Hero. 
And uh, this Hellion is going to try and come in here for some scouting information. Probe, ooh, nice body block right there. Maru not going to necessarily know that it is Twilight Council. He, he might have to guess a little bit if it is going to be Phoenix's or Blink. Yeah, so it looks somewhat similar to the previous game, but there is one very important thing to keep in mind, is that Maru did not go Reaper here. He yeah. went Marine into Reactor. And it may not seem like that big of a difference, but it really makes a big difference in the Terran defense of things, because they just have that little bit of extra firepower. They have a few more Marines out, and that in general makes their life easier if Hero decides to be aggressive, which I don't know if he wants to be. He doesn't really have to be an Oceanborn, but could also be like, all right, let's go ahead and clean up these uh, two mines if Maru is going to commit with this first with a mine drop. And then Hero can always send it, because that is what makes Hero, that makes him such a nightmare to play against the Terran players. You never know when that man is going to pull the trigger. He does pull the probe straight. Overall, very good defense. Only lost a single probe. I mean, that's going to give Hero absolutely a lot of confidence to be like, you know what? If you open up double mine, I saw a Hellion as well. Maybe I should go ahead and make myself comfortable on the other side of the map and put some Stalkers in your face. Yeah, and he is going four gate Blink Stalker once again. Maru does have that bunker at the front, but no bunker in the main, no double bunker at the front, as we've seen players like Clem, like Spirit do, because they are so used to getting four gate Blink Stalkered by the likes of Max Pax. Uh, Hero, ooh, he will be able to figure out where that first tank is. And he sees that there's no bio covering it right now. War Prism is coming on in. Hero might decide to pull the trigger. I think he's gonna shade forward once again, Warping a few more Stalkers, and if he doesn't see any Marines here, he might just pull the trigger and go. Yeah, I saw a lot of Marines at the top of the ramp, but it's always very cool, is that you guys can keep an eye on the Adepts. Hero is going to walk with the Adepts forward, then the tank will shoot at the Adepts, and once the tank shoots at the Adept, that's when the Stalkers show up and they're going to get on top of it. Okay, apparently we're not going to do that this time, but he will still blink forward, grabs the first tank rather quickly. Will he be able to get the bunker though? I don't know, repair is absolutely amazing, and repair is going to be good enough to keep this bunker alive. And I gotta give it to Maru. Great positioning on that second tank. And we do have some map presence on the side of Maru this time around, oh. as he's going to drop the uh, other turrets in the main base of Hero. But he does lose his bunker. And that is obviously a bit of an issue, especially when the tank cannot participate in the fight. Yeah, that is a pretty huge deal. Uh, we are, oh, nice tank shot right there on the center of those stalkers, able to get quite a bit of damage. Hero did make a mistake on the execution. He went in just before the Adept shaded, and he ends up taking a lot of damage. Stim in the main base will get sniped. It's not very far along, but that still will uh, extend the amount of time where this is Hero's playground. We know my shot in the natural picture in picture. That's a massive shot. Are you kidding me? Get six extra workers, because I believe four of them already died to the other turret. That means that Maru right now has a five SEV lead over Hero's probe count. Hero obviously still feels that, hey, I can do something here. I know you don't have Stim. Maru's like, I know I don't have Stim, but what I do have is a bunch of Marines and Marauders that are going to protect these tanks. And Hero, once more, the Stalkers have taken a bit of a beating. Uh, Hero knows that he obviously needs to get way more value out of this, so even though a lot of these dogs are low on HP, he's gonna go for it stat fast. And I think it's the right choice, does eat one big tank shot. That's almost bait, by the way, by Maro, where he's like, yeah. oh no, I really hope you don't kill this tech lap again, <laughs> where I'm getting concussive shells for my one Marauder. I love that by Maru, that's really cool. I was gonna mention that, I really like that he started that concussive shells the way that he did. Ooh, Blink Ford gonna come in on top of the tank. Hero will be able to grab it, and the Marines and Marauders, because they don't have that stim, they're not able to get over there particularly quickly. The concave for Hero is pretty good, and he does have that second blink in the form of the War Prism. We need to kill that Observer, Maru. That Observer is giving Hero way too much information. I think that one high ground shot there of the tank should have kind of given it away. Maru is still doing fantastic economically. Hero has been warping in, so excuse me, uh, building a couple of probes. I guess they warp in as well. But he's still mostly being focused on the aggression. But I think at this point, Hero knows that it's very unlikely he's going to kill Maru. So what he's going to do now is just try to get a few more SCVs. If it's not in the main base, we're going to try the natural. He is dropping the Robo Bay. Oh. Because we are going to get four Stalkers on top of one of the last two remaining tanks. <laughs> it's honestly pretty good with just four Stalkers. A little mistake there by Maru, because Maru has more than enough bio to at least leave a few units there protecting the tank. That is the most Orbital Command energy I've ever seen on a Terran wow. at this stage in the game. He's got, he's got a Raven. Yeah. Uh, he is either really scared out. of DTs. What? I have. I don't think I've ever seen that. I, I, at first, I was like, that's got to be for DTs, right? But no, he's still got the Raven. Okay, finally going to drop some mules. That will undercut the economic advantage that Maru had there. I, I mean, I don't know if it's going to 
make the difference in this game necessarily, but that's a big deal. I was wondering if Hero would have gone for a... A stim is done, by the way. Hero, are we paying attention? There's a Viking in production as well. The Viking oh, is out. Right now. I hope that he's got energy on one of these Nexus. That's going to be somewhat close. I wish that Maru would have moved oh! the Viking. Oh, my God, he, gets he still gets it. I was going to say, I wish that Maru moved it a bit closer because then the projectile lands earlier. But Maru apparently didn't need it from downtown. Gets the War Prism with four stalkers inside of it. Honestly, stat first. I think that Hero should have maybe gone for oh. a disrupt here. As Hero is not paying attention, he's going to lose two more stalkers in the center of the map. I mean, Maru has just played a beautiful game three here on Ocean Board. Yeah, you talk about things not going Maru's way. That could not have gone any better. The SCVs are here. There's only one rangeless Colossus. This looks like we are going to be going to game four. Huge concave for Maru. He stims in. Battery overcharge is going to be pretty great. Great force fields on the top side. But that anti-armor missile is coating everything. Beautiful auto turret to body block the Colossus. Widowmine. Boom, baby! Massive shot. It's not going to change who wins the game, but it will put an exclamation point on it as Maru fights back and forces game four. Yep, a very solid game by Maru, getting a couple of great my shots, especially in that natural where Hero left one stalker behind it. And that's everything we mentioned on Side Delta, yes. where as a Protoss player, you don't want to be dealing with a Widowmine drop. Even if it's a single Widowmine, you don't want to look over at your natural. You don't want to warp in stalkers, because some of these Blink stalker fights against Bio without Stim or two tanks and a bunker, they often come down to one or two extra units as Hero picked up over to the left there a little bit, looking at how Maro was doing, but I believe that Maro was laser focused on his own monitor. We had just a great shot. You look at that picture in picture in the bottom right side, you get the stalker, you get like 10 probes. Uh, fantastic stuff by Maro. Yeah, and uh, it may not seem like that many workers getting six extra workers. It's huge. It's huge at this stage in the game because Hero is looking to potentially, if things go well enough, it's a pretty edge case, but if things go well enough with this four gate blink stalker, you could see a similar situation to what we saw in game number two. <laughs> now, I don't think we're ever going to see that in this game because it was obviously already two back and forth, but the, the little bits of damage that come in can make a huge difference. I want to point out this auto turret right here in the back. It body blocked the Colossus just a teensy bit. I don't think that was going to make the difference. I don't think that Colossus was ever going to live, but just a really nice little move. And then that Widowmine shot really punctuating that game. Good stuff. A very fun series between these two. I am somewhat curious, though, Stepfest, as we are waiting a split moment to hop into game four, if we have a couple of other cool results, because obviously there are eight series being played at once. Eight absolutely amazing best of fives, and it's do or die for all of them. So let's just go ahead and take a look and see if we've got a couple of fun results coming in. Because I uh, definitely haven't seen everything yet. Seems like Creator has taken the lead over Kalazur. Spirit has taken the lead over Ragnarok. That's pretty oh. big. Raider and Horstam are all tied up after two games. At oh. least with the information that I have. We could obviously be behind a little bit. You know, I don't know how quick the good is, but so many fun series being played at once. Anyway, we're going to focus on ours, which is pretty damn fun as well. In the top right side, we are looking at the main base of the reigning champ of the DreamHack Masters Atlanta last year. He has one hell of a journey ahead of him, but we know that he's capable of it. It's Dragon Kaizi Gaming Hero. And his opponent spawning down in the bottom left. He starts the comeback, but can he keep it going? It is Onside Gaming's Maru. Ah, favoring his shoulder a little bit there. You know, could could be uh, could be a little bit of lingering discomfort, or he could just be itchy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we don't know. It's just yeah, it's all speculation. Uh, that is really interesting. That we've got just talking about the other series a little bit there. Uh, I spoke to Spirit this morning at breakfast. <laughs> you know, I hang out with the pro players, no big deal. Uh, and it was, he was feeling not just confident in his match against Shin, formerly known as Ragnarok, he felt confident in the entire bracket. He's like, yeah, no, I'll, I'll play uh, Shin and then Lambo and then Classic. Yeah, I'll make it out. I'm going into the playoffs. And I was like, damn, Spirit, that swagger coming in. I love to see that. But that's the beauty of that part of the bracket, because you can talk to Lambo, 
And I don't think that Lambo is going to look at that bracket and be like, oh, no, I'm like so upset that this is where I ended up. Like, no, yeah. Lambo will look at them and yeah. be like, oh, I can absolutely do this. Cyan will look at it and be like, man, I know this tournament is tough, but I've been playing some pretty damn good StarCraft lately. Yep. I believe that I can make a bit of a run here. And obviously, Shin is going to feel the exact the same way. And that's the beauty of StarCraft 2. And especially about these tournaments, the deeper we get, the more competitive it gets. And you need to believe in yourself, because if you don't do it, who else is going to do it for you? Well, I mean, I'm sure that uh, I'm sure that all of these players' moms are watching back home. But it's it's a lot more important, I think, to believe in yourself at the end of the day. And that's we got some players that are pretty overwhelming with confidence. Maybe they don't match the level of a dark, but Maru Hero, they know how good they are, and we're gonna see it here once again. Now, Maru once more did not go for the SC. Actually, did he go for the SCV scout? Am I crazy? No, he did not go for the SCV nope. scout. Just looked around, checked for that potential proxy second gateway in one location. But it's just going to be Hellions behind this to uh, scout. Because this time we are building the CC on the low ground, right? Yes. So then you need to respect it a little bit more. I think high ground CC, you're honestly safe against pretty much everything. Maybe one base proxy Stargate can be annoying, but, yeah. you know, Maru is going to be fine. He's also going into Cyclones for the very first time relatively early, as Hero has gone for the one gate Twilight Council with two extra gateways. Has a couple of adapts here on Patrol. It's going to make it hard for this Hellion to go in. Adapts are very good against light armored units, and this Hellion is still going to outmaneuver it. It's actually kind of nice because the Hellion is a bit quicker. Now you know that it's the opening is double adept sentry. We'll get a perfect scout off. Honestly, Maru's gonna be pretty happy with this. Even if he can't kill any probes, he saw everything he was looking for. Yeah, and he was uh he he did build that early cyclone, but he's gonna add on like, initially he started up a widow mine, instead adds on a couple more tech labs. I was wondering if maybe he was thinking about going for a tiny little push. Maybe put a little bit of harassment in on that cybernetic score, that gateway on the low ground, but it looks like no, he's gonna start up tanks. He is saying, well, you've got four gate blink stalker twice now, but he's gonna do the thing he did on Radu set, single cyclone in a medevac. That's such an interesting drop to me. Yeah, it's very weird, because Blink is very close to finishing up. So Maru is hoping that Hero is gonna send everything to the other side of the map, but Hero has not done that, and the cyclone is not going to win this oh. fight. Maru could be in trouble here. Will that medevac live or die? It barely lives. And and that is honestly a massive relief for Maru, because if he would have lost that, you lose your presence. As Hero has gone up to four gases very quick, four minutes, 30 seconds into the game. The man's got four gases saturated, even before he's got 16 probes on the minerals. And he drops one of the quickest Templar archives I have seen in a little while, Statfest, in this matchup. Hero loves this play. He loves this two-base Templar opening. He... So <laughs> it it's... Oftentimes, it can end up looking like madness, but sometimes it looks like absolute genius. Uh, and it, it does depend a little bit on how the way things shape up, how, you know, sometimes the War Prism travels across the map, if he can keep that storm hidden long enough. But when it connects, it can look like utter magic. And with a game in hand, I kind of like the play. Well, I definitely expect Maro to throw down a scan. If Hero's not in his face with a couple of Blink Stalkers, mm. if Hero doesn't show up with a Warp Prism, Maru's gonna be like, huh? So I guess you're transitioning this time. And I assume it's Colossus. He will probably throw it, the, throw the skin down around the natural because he wants to see the amount of gas that's gonna be taken. But if you take it a little bit, if you throw the skin down a little bit towards the right side of the natural nexus of Hero, I think you can see the gas and he could potentially see the Templar Archives as well. And that'd obviously be massive for Maru because then he won't be ambushed by Storm. Storm can be great. Storm is particularly great, oh. and he did kind of throw it down, but I wish he would have thrown down a bit more towards the right, because now you see a bunch of stuff on the left side that wasn't really needed. But I think that Observer and the War Prism sitting next to each other, while the gases are fully up and running, you'd be like, huh. I mean, if you would go Colossus, like, why would you have a Prism here? Yeah, it <laughs> It would certainly be a strange setup, and as uh, more Widow Mines are added in, I think Maru at least has an inkling about this. Ooh, triple drop heading out to the right side. And I will say that storms do not necessarily deal amazing with this, but the feedback could be very useful. Look at the production there, by the way. Triple cannon and a battery. Oh, it's wow. Like, Hero is playing this like he is uh, 27 workers ahead, and as long as nothing bad happens, he's going to be fine. It's like... That's 
not quite the case here, Robert. You really have to worry about Oh, that's selling. It's not a single widow mine. It's just a straight up army size. Maru has 69 army supply. Hero's currently working with 34. And I know he's got a couple of storms. As Maru faked that drop, is still potentially going to go for it. Honestly, in the straight up fight, Hero's in so much trouble. And a cannon or two is not going to save him, Statfest. No, he needs to make sure that either A, he gets the biggest storms of his life, or B, he jumps on those medivacs while they're fully loaded. Probe does spot this army. There's the storms. Ah, uh, that's not great. That's not, not great. Not great, and he loses one of the high Templar. And Two the storms. Yep, and uh, uh, Widomise is still here as well. Honestly, I think Hero's in a bit of trouble. Maru obviously knows exactly what is happening, and he's playing it out perfectly. He's on the other side of the map with 74 army supply, plus one as well. A very early shield battery overcharge, and I'm starting to feel like our man Hero is crumbling a little bit here in Game 4. Yeah. Perhaps not happy that he finds himself in Game 4 at all, because this, I don't know if it's a doable fight. The storms will connect, and especially that one on the bottom left side is kind of good, but there is no reason for Maru to stop attacking. Maru's got a big army, throws down a scan, and he says, all right, if you are all out defending the third, I'm just going to go ahead and go for the main base. Hero does see an opportunity to at least get on top of the tanks, the Widow Mines, clean up a couple of the Marauders, but a lot of the gateways are going to be unpowered. Yeah, that Artosis pylon disabling four gateways right there. The Plus one attack did finish. The probes are going to get kind of sent back in here. Oh, I love the Archon drop to try and deal with this. The supplies are surprisingly close right now. Like, I thought he, uh, Maru was starting to run away with it. Big lift up into the medevacs. Good job for Maru to make sure he doesn't lift up into the one that was low on HP. Surprisingly, there's only a six supply gap. How does Hero do this kind of stuff? I think it was awesome by Hero. I love how decisive he was after Maru went for the drop, but I personally don't think that Maru had to go for that drop. Maru's army was just better there. And what Hero really had were those storms, and he utilized all five of his storms already. Like, there was nothing else to worry about, but I think Maru was worried about Zelos coming in from the bottom and not a storm landing, because obviously Maru does not see what we saw, but his army was legit better in the straight up fight. And even though the drop could complicate things for Hero, I think Hero in the end had enough units to deal with that. And it also allowed him to get on top of the tank, on top of that Liberator, I believe, that showed up a little bit later as well. Otherwise, with the buy units still there, I don't think Hero can ever make that move on top of those factory units. No, certainly not. We are going to see Hero targeting down the, the medevac, able to kill one of the Widowmines inside. Nice split from Hero. Maru does get a big <laughs> shot, though, at the tail end. And you can see Hero, <laughs> a little bit of a huh <laughs> on the player cam right there. Reasonably so. I do like the addition of the double forge from Hero after he lost that single forge in the main. But there is going to be a decent sized timing where Maru will have a little upgrade advantage. Yep, Maru plus one obviously has been done for a little while. Plus one armor is about to finish up, as you guys can see on the right side of our screen. First ghost on the way, first Vikings on the way. I mean, ghost, Viking, the armory is going to come online as well. That's obviously going to make these Widow Mines a lot more annoying. Not a bad little run by here for Hero. He's probably also surprised how well that went. Oh, wow. These kind of run bys most of the time are only good if something else is happening, but nothing else is really happening. It's just a couple of Zellos very casually walking into the natural. And Maru, I want to say, kind of forgot about the last two Zellos, but he did see those in the end. Seven SCVs, though, keeping Maru at home. Buying time for your Protoss upgrades. Buying time for the extended Thermal Lens. That went surprisingly decent for Hero. One SC or uh, one Zealot just walked right into the front door, right into the main base. Killed three extra SCVs before it got cleaned up. Maru, a uh, little bit of a fumble right there. After already a not terrible run by, it becomes pretty good. Now we are going to see this push moving out. There are some Vikings here. Uh, Medivac's a little bit lost, but we do have five ghosts on the field. Nice Ooh. feedback from the high ground. Very good job. Ooh, but he does lose a couple of stalkers on a bad rally. Yep, and I love that Maru immediately realized, like, wait a minute, you were way too quick with that. You saw me, right? <laughs> Throws down the scan, kills the observer immediately. But that's what TVP is all about. As a Terran player, you want to take away the vision of the Protoss because that might become so much harder for Hero to have not just his battle units, but also the spellcasters in the right position. And the spellcasters need to be in the right position because flying in a prism is going to be so dangerous right now against Vikings and against Ghost. That was a beautiful little snipe right there from Hero. He didn't know exactly where his opponent's army was. He tags it with the Stalkers. Oh, Blink forward, tries to get one of those Vikings. Does eventually get it, eats a big EMP, but he will be able to get back to the shield batteries. There are still a lot of High Templar available, even with Ghost. Another great feedback, and they, even an EMP used behind that, so that's a double win for Hero. And he is doing such a good job at buying time. 
He's finished up his plus one armor. He's finished up his uh, now plus two attack and the extended thermal lance. All of those were not done yet. And Maru might have to back up until that 2-2 finishes up. But Hero, he's already started to transition into the next stage. What a lovely little one-two there, by the way, from Maru. Throws out a scan on the army to keep tabs of it. Vikings kill the Observer, then the Protoss army walks into a Widowmite that's cloaked because of the armory. Ah. This is pretty funny. Maru is maxed out. Maru obviously wants to fight. I'm a little bit surprised by this transition of Hero because we're spending a crazy amount of resources on that double Stargate, plus one air weapons, fleet beacon, but what are we going to build? Like, I guess some carriers, but it's going to take a long time before these carriers come into play oh. as Maru is walking into the natural of Hero, and Hero is kind of far out of position, and this is going to be so difficult for the Protoss to get a good engagement. Maru is showing a lot of respect to the Protoss army, so he will kite. Really worried about the big storms landing. Obviously, Maru doesn't know where those High Templars are hiding. But to be honest with you, Stadfest, I don't think they're hiding anywhere at all. I believe the only High Templars we have are inside of that war prism. They are, and uh, Maru kind of knew where Hero's army was thanks to that Widow Mine and thanks <laughs> to that earlier scan that you were talking about. Those Widow Mines are so pesky to deal with. But it feels like Maru is kind of allowing Hero to get away with this. That is so many zealots that just got. They just caught, got caught sneaking out after curfew, but Maru says, you know what, uh, I'll yes, allow no. it. Yes, no, yes, no. I feel like Maru thought, okay, maybe I should just fight. If you send that many zealots to the other side of the map, should I just take the fight? And he's like, nah, That's maybe so I should many zealots. Because I'm going to lose pretty much everything in my natural. A couple of SMBs are going to die. Hero is freeing up supply, right? Because he made those two stargates. He made that fleet beacon. Hero wants carriers. Bit of an odd recall there on just four zealots on top of the ramp, but it's okay. Zello's doing their thing. Hero needs to be careful that he doesn't throw away too much at once. And I really don't like Hero's main army being here, by the way. Steadfast. If we are saving time, if we're buying time for these carriers, we should not send... Oh, oh, oh careful oh. with your war prism. Okay. Oh, Maru is paying a little more attention there. Oh, there's one of the Colossus actually getting tagged there by uh, the Marauders. These Widow Mines are just firing all over the shop. And Hero's army is honestly a bit better than Bruce. It is not that fantastic at the moment, even with one or two carriers. I'm not loving this army stat fest. I want to see a few disruptors or maybe some immortals on the ground as well. Yeah, the carriers and stalkers and the colossus and the archon are not going to beat this army of Maru. The lack of disruptors is concerning. I, I got to agree. And there's so many Vikings already on the field for Maru, even though a few of them are bruised up. They're also getting very close to their plus two. There's only the two carriers for the moment. Two more just popped out. And we do have another five and six on the way, but they're, oh, this is a very exposed carrier army. One of them goes down very quickly. Hero struggling to keep tabs on this army. And Maru, he's been so afraid to commit all the way through on that ramp, but he keeps finding good fights around it. Yep, and the Widow Mines just keep on firing. Hero finally takes out one of them. Heroes don't think he's gonna be able to get this base up and running. That Bar Prism is in the oh. front though. And we drop one Storm, that's not bad. Clips the part of the buyer. The second one is not all that great. We saw Classic have a couple of absolutely fantastic blinks in the late game against Maru, where over and over again we kind of thought, it's like, oh, are you in trouble now? But he never really was. And maybe Hero took a look at it. You know, the old school logic is that you never want to be this stalker heavy in yeah. the late game, because stalkers don't have that much DPS as another observer falls. Well, the Protoss nerds do seem to just kind of know where to be right on the edge, what they can and cannot get away with. Just chip away, Sniper Medivac, Blink Back, Sniper Viking and Blink Back. As Maru is going to work on Advanced Ballistics. He's got 3-3, three, three, by the way, on the bio, as Hero just now has plus two armor finishing up. Yeah, there was a solid 15, 20 seconds right there where it was a three upgrade advantage for Maru, and he didn't take advantage. We are going to see a big EMP on the Stalkers. Maru, ah, he... <laughs> he's playing <laughs> it safe. He's playing it so safe. Oh, and he's actually adding missile turrets on the front line. I love this. Especially now that he's finished up the 3-3, I would really like to see those late game upgrades for them. EMP not able to land. Now it gets one of those uh, High Templar. There are still a lot of storms, and it's very clear that Maru is afraid of getting stormed on that ramp, but it's allowed Hero to now get up to six and soon to be seven carriers. Yeah, but we have 17 Vikings, and we don't just have missile turrets here, we have a sensor tower as well, which oh, is wow. really cool because oh, that allows God. Maru <laughs> to permanently keep track of Hero's army movement, and Maru should be able to find a little opening. Shield battery overcharge is active though, and if there is one fight I think Maru shouldn't take, it's near battery overcharge because carriers have so many shields. 
But Mario is still just kind of doing his thing, getting some good value out of it. The War Prism trying to flank with some storms, flying into all the missile turrets. The carriers are turning around right now, Steadfast Hero definitely finding a pretty decent fight. The one spot where Mario absolutely did not want to fight was near Battery Overcharge. A lot of interceptors are going to go down. And look at the observers getting yeah. caught as well there towards the end. Maru hates observers with a passion. Yeah, there are still two with the army, fortunately, for Hero. Ooh, Vikings do find one of the carriers and another. And the war prison. Up. Ah, this could be potential for big storms on these Vikings, but we're not going to see them yet. Good kiting from Maru, and he will be able to disengage successfully. Maru's only on 59 SCVs. Ha That's actually not that high and he has stimmed a lot he is on six medevac so it should be fine but the mass liberator transition is going to do really well against the ground army i don't think it's all right to be around like 59 or 64. i don't really want to see maru get a whole lot more because what he needs is a massive army he needs a lot of army supply yeah at this point you already have all your upgrades you already have all your infrastructure you're already maxed out like we don't need 80 svs at this point what we need is enough Vikings to one-shot some carriers, to one-shot a Colossus, to gun down those War Prisms. That is a lot more useful than 20 extra SCVs would ever be. Yeah, but it does mean losing all those uh, missile turrets was a big deal. Huge storm on the back line. Maru having to run through the entire thing. Very nice leading storm from Hero. He knew Maru was going to have to disengage, and he got the full duration. A lot of damage on that army. Liberators, though, are going to push this army back. They do have their plus two, and that will mean they one-shot the EMP'd Stalkers. Hero. Hero, though, finding a bit of a position. Oh, activates the Mothership's Cloak. Maru, ah, he's got the ability to drop some big EMPs, potentially, but looks like they're just both going to disengage for the moment. A couple of Zealots will find that Planetary Fortress in the center, and the Zealots got some upgrades. It's not a winner one shot. He does not go up as the Sun Round Hero avoids it. I don't know if I love Hero's army being here, but hey, I love the bio. He's a bit low on HP, but there is a Planetary here. That means that the Stalkers can't really stick around and fight. Hero's hoping that Maru will chase his army, because if Maru is going to chase, the units sometimes clump up a little bit, and we can land some big storms, but in the end, there's way too much Ooh. firepower in this Terran army, and Hero drops 60 supply real quick, and what did he really kill in return? Not a whole lot. He damaged a lot of bio units, but it wasn't enough. We are going to see battery overcharge popped at the top of the ramp, but it is not going to be enough. The Liberators are here. The Carrier's flanking, but Maru will send us to a game five. He gets the job done versus Hero, and the first series of the day is delivering. It is going to distance, and especially here in the late game, Maru just kind of looking superior to Hero, man. I felt that Maru maybe could have uh, went pedal to the metal a little bit harder. He could have pushed the issue a tiny bit more, and I think this game could have been over a bit earlier. But he showed a lot of respect to Hero. He yes. wants to make sure he wouldn't do something silly against the potential of being stormed, being flanked. But yeah, Hero in the late game there with his carriers. I don't want to say Luke Clunas because he was obviously under a lot of pressure, but especially some of the move commands throughout the center where Maru you just keeps track of the army and he's like, oh, yeah. free carrier, free carrier. Obviously, kudos to Hero, by the way, because here, eight minutes into the game, I actually thought he was in all sorts of trouble. Look at the army supply over here. It's just yeah. fast. It looked so dire. Maru decided to go for the drop found some economic damage, found the forge, unpowered the gates. Actually was worried here for Hero, then he sent the probes back a tiny bit too early, but since the Archons were here to save the day, he only lost like five additional probes. It's cool that we got such an awesome long game after all of that happened, but it never really felt that Hero was close to winning it to me. Like, I, I felt like, where are we going with this? How do we beat this Terran army? And I felt with the composition that he had, wasn't it? That was probably his best shot fight near battery overcharge but Maru obviously wasn't born last night he knew that that was not the right place to stick around forever and I think played it out in a very cool calm and calm and collected manner yeah there was obviously uh, a few moments where Hero found some opportunities especially Ooh. oh that looks cool as hell it's big. damn that is big I've got a statue but it's not that big <laughs> yeah. that's man I want that can I can I drive that home can I fly that home that looks cool as hell um, there was quite a few moments where, yeah, it looked like Hero might have been able to find an opportunity, but Maru never committed. There was a couple of opportunities, I think, for Maru to maybe just end the game, especially... You run into the natural, yeah. run into that fourth base that he was trying you to You zone out with the track. EMPs, yeah. yeah. I definitely think... And, and, and he knew exactly where his opponent's army was, thanks to that Widowmine, but... 
he played it so safe. And that's also what we want to see, right? Tournament life on the line over here. No more second chances. The loser of the best of five goes home. The winner will advance into the next round where things don't really get a whole lot easier as uh, so we have the German Klassiker between Hero Marine and Showtime. I don't know if we got any updates in that regard. Oh, they are going to distance as well. Oh. Hero Marine and Showtime all tied up after four games. So they are 2-2. Two and two. Maron Hero are 2-2. Two two. Only Vera, by the way, has stopped the run of Elazer. As ah. Elazer looked pretty damn good yesterday. Just powered his way through that open bracket. Made it into the knockout bracket. But Only Vera finally snapped that losing streak that he was starting to uh, accumulate over here in Atlanta. Last year, 0-6. This year, he was 0-4. Yesterday, losing 0-2 to Spirit. 0-2 against Solar. It is great to see that the world champ still has it as he takes out Team Liquid's Elaser. And that means that we could potentially get an IEM Katowice to quarterfinals rematch over here, Stadfest. Yeah, for me, that was one of the most magical series of the year. Just such a fantastic event. And I mean, obviously the finals for Oliveira and that game five in particular, it felt like Maru was pulling Maru magic. And then Oliveira shut it down, which doesn't happen. People don't do that. When Maru decides he's the main character, he's the main character. But he ran into a normal man, and he was stopped. But I do think in terms of how close it was, the Rainer versus Oliveira series was the... That was the most Cinderella beautiful series. And especially that, I think it was game four, was just absolutely fantastic. Yeah, that was a great series, but we're not there yet, right? We can just count out the no. captain. We know Oliveira is there, but it seems like the captain is still battling against Raider, unless we missed an update. We also see that Kelazur guys tying things up with Creator, and they were in two and two. I don't know if there's a winner there yet or not. Winner of that will play against the winner of Bunny versus Gubio, but look at Kelazur taking two maps of Creator, who's obviously amazing. Uh, we had, by the way, a tiny bit of a break. That's not because we just want to let you guys know about all these other matches that are happening, even though we'd love to do that, obviously. This is such an amazing tournament, and it's great to see nerds from all over the globe travel here to Atlanta this weekend. But Maro needed a bit of a break, and if the Prince is requesting a break, we're going to give it to him. Yeah, I think he might have earned it, maybe. Potentially. I think, I think it's okay. Uh, as we get into game number five, Maru on that reverse sweep track. Can he keep it going or will this man stop him in his tracks for Dragon Kitesy Gaming? It is Hero. Hero had a couple of nicknames over the years, the Smiling Assassin, but also the Prince of IEM once upon a time, as Hero is very familiar with winning tournaments outside of Korea. This man, a little bit less, but he does dominate within Korea, and that's pretty important too. In the top right side, tying things up, sending it to the rubber match after being down 0-2 in our very first best of five today. We are looking at the main base of one side, Gaming's Maru. I actually heard from Gemini, or GG Emony, as some call him, mm -hmm. that is no longer on-site gaming. They will go with just on-site. Oh. Yeah, I wonder where they got that from. <laughs> uh, I wonder. I wonder. I wonder if they could have gotten it from uh, but maybe think, a, a mythical snake. Yeah, but I think they're okay with on-site gaming for now, but I do believe that in the future, they want to go with a just on-site. No longer on-site gaming. Uh, I think that's off-site of them. <laughs> I'm okay with it. El Cyanee as a final map. Is this something you'd really love to see here, Stathfest? Uh, maybe a cheeky quick gold. Is there a... Yeah. No, 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 that's a full wall. Uh, maybe a cheeky quick gold. I think that could be pretty neat. I do think it's so dangerous against Terran. But if there's any player that could pull it off, maybe Hero. And... Hmm. Out of Maru, I wouldn't mind him doing like a slightly more dedicated 1-1-1 one, one, one push. He hasn't pulled that out in this series yet. We haven't what do you seen think? a single like bio cyclone push. And yeah. I think some of those, I mean, I guess you don't want to do that against Twilight Council openings too much. And Hero yeah. loves the Twilight Council. The only map he didn't do it is Aratu set, but that's just a map where you kind of force to play Stargate almost all together. Do have one last update before we fully focus on game five, Maru versus Hero. 
Big Gabriel took out the Dean Maurer. And so Hero Marine has advanced into the next round in that German class seeker. And that is relevant because the winner of this series will run into Big Gabe in the second round of the knockout stage. That is very notable. Uh, we could have the caster nightmare of Hero versus Hero Marine, which, uh, well, fortunately, we won't have to cover. But, I mean, I am still a little bit jealous. Oh, there it is. We call there it, it Big Gabe for a reason, so it's really not that much of a nightmare, right? <laughs> <laughs> we just go yeah. with Gabe. Yep. Uh, here is the Stargate. We haven't seen the Stargate since game one. Hero's going to go back into it. If Maru scouts it with his Reaper, by the way, that'd be big, because what Maru obviously does not want is a similar scenario to Ratu said, where he picks up a Cyclone, flies to the other side of the map, loses the Medivac, loses the Cyclone immediately. But the Reaper hopped into the main base. Maru knows what's up. He can now adjust. He can keep the Widow Mines at home, or he can put him in a random spot, hoping that Stargate units fly into it. Uh, Mario's going to be feeling pretty good about the first four minutes here of El Cyane. And Hero, by the way, if he plays Phoenix on a map like this, I was going to say, I think he might go Phoenix Zealot, but he's not as he drops a relatively quick Robo. So we're going to get some Phoenix Colossus action out of Hero by the looks of it. Yeah, and Maru played against a ton of Phoenix Colossus in his days, but also he played against Classic, who is, I think, probably the best Phoenix Colossus player in Korea right now. I think he is just so solid and sharp with it. And I mean, Hero, he is extremely good, but like you said, he does favor that Twilight Council. So it will be interesting if it does end up being a big push, which as we can see, Maru is cutting a couple of SCVs here and there to keep factory and unit production. Oh. I think we're gonna see a bit of a push. Yep, and these pushes are so hard to deal with. Now I gotta say that Classic did an absolutely 10 out of 10 job against this stuff yesterday where he was basically defending the third before he had a third. But because of that, he had high ground uh, present or high ground advantage. He was able to get a couple of shots off. I don't know if Hero is going to make a similar goal to what Classic did. And if you just sit in your natural, it actually becomes harder as a Protoss. Because then it's even ground. Then Maru can see your unit. Maru's going to get the lock-ons. Maru's going to get the siege up with Widow Mines, with Liberators. This is where Maru, I think, yesterday lost it. Because the Immortal was out and he couldn't get onto the high ground. This time, he does get onto the high ground, and if Hero loses his pilot, he's in trouble. He needs that pilot, otherwise he can't build anything anymore. He is not building another wing. We are going to see a lift on the Cyclone in the back. Phoenix, though, will get targeted down. Cyclone will not fall, but the Immortal will eventually kill oh, it. Nice hot pickup from Maru, and the Vikings going to push away the second Phoenix. This is looking... It's looking a little scary. It's promising for Maru, but obviously because Maru didn't build that many SCVs, which you pointed out very well, Maru needs a little bit more. He knows that. Oh. Loses his uh, Cyclone. So at this point, Maru can do too much over here anymore, but he has done a great job in reducing the Phoenix count, picking up these Phoenixes. And these Stalkers, of course, don't have Blink because of the way Hero has opened up. Maru really wants to be as annoying as possible. One more Phoenix does pop, and it actually shuts down the Viking. So that is something, but this target is going to be on. Oh no. my god, kill it, One kill it! Shot, Maru. He no. leaves it alive! There's no high ground vision! That was an Artosis pylon! And it would have supply blocked him! Maru, no! What? 2 HP! What just happened? Maru was fine there. He could have gone down that pylon easily. Then he could have always picked up the units later and fly them home in a bit safer way. Maybe he was focused on his Liberator. That is doing some good damage. But that was crazy, that fast. That could have been so much better for Maru than what it turned out to be. Yeah, great target fire from the Liberator at the very end there. He gets three probes initially, adds another four to his kill count. But look at the army supply. I know it's not crazy at this stage in the game, but this third command center, it uh, it should still finish, right? Yes. I ah, it's a little close, but he, it should just barely finish. He's going double engineering bay right now. Maru, does he have any tanks out? He's got two, okay. He He's should fine. be just fine. Yeah, yeah, he should be just fine. These stalkers don't have blink. There's really not a whole lot the hero can do here. Very unlucky for hero that he showed up like two seconds yeah. late, right? Because if you do get an STV, then you can get on top of this bad I... boy. And then there is a chance that Maru can't complete it at all. I think Maru is still in a pretty marvelous position. As hero's army at the moment is just not that impressive. Can hero lift the tanks and just go? There's no, no. way, right? That would be insane. No. Yeah, no, the especially... The units are not good enough. Like, no <laughs> blink. There's no micro potential in this army. Yeah. No immediate reinforcements either. There's absolutely zero. I mean, yeah. you know what Big Gabriel told you many times. SCV speed stalk is <laughs> that fast. And I see plenty of SCVs there. Yeah, I was just looking at the bio count. 
Obviously, even without the bunker, it would have been tough. And with that third tank popping out, I think it's the right call from here to not go for it. I just look at the army supplies and I'm like, oh, he's got two immortals. Those beat siege tanks, right? Well, not behind a wall, not behind all that. Uh, Maru's economy is booming. just magnificent. Yeah, it is booming. He does have that third command star. Obviously, that go back into the main base, and he won't be able to land it for a while. But look at that. He's got the full Monty. He's got a straight flush of those bio upgrades, plus one attack, plus one armor, combat shields, concussive shells, and stim all on the way at once. Hero needs to be careful because Hero thinks that he's got a very good army here, but there are a bunch of interference matrixes available. The good deals for Maru, though. No. Oh, Maru throws that scan, misses it. Now this orbiter is uh -oh. a bit low in HP, and he could actually uh -oh. be in trouble. The stalkers don't have blink, but Phoenix oh is my god! Oh my god, he loses it! Maru, no! Oh, you talk about things going in at someone's favor, not going in their favor. Two times in the same game, losing that third command center. It's a disaster. He's on 62 SCVs and two command centers. Yeah, but he's about to get all the bio upgrades online. That's obviously a big loss, but I don't think that means that Maru is out of this game or no. something. I really no. think he's completely fine because he's about to get that 1-1 one, one steam combat shield. He's got tanks. He's got ravens with interference matrix. Like, Hero needs a whole lot more than killing the orbital, but the killing the orbital brings him back into the game, gives Hero more than a chance. He's going to make him feel pretty good about it. But I'm not. I'm still not in love with where my hero is at in this game. Like he needs to do a whole lot more than kill a single orbital to get Maru out of this. Absolutely, he does. But uh, this. Oh, hello. Oh my God, they miss each other. Uh, no, hero saw that whole army. He's just going for the base trade. He says, "You don't base trade a Terran." Nah, I'm going straight for it. Colossus are going to get kind of flanked here. Big interference matrices. One Colossus goes down very quickly. Zealot's not in position. Maru collapsing back into his own natural. Hero losing so much DPS in this army. And Maru, will he be able to get on top of the Colossus? Not yet. The Zealot Warpin is going to town. Siege uh. tanks are going to come back, but it looks like Hero is trapped. Yep, can we maybe at least get out of there with one robo unit hero? That'd be kind of cool. Hero says, nope, I want to lose all of them, loses the Zealots. At least the Phoenix is still here. There's a crazy amount of empty air left. Yeah, there's the like Phoenix nothing. Lift a tank, they're going to lift one more Marine. There are Widow Mines, though. I don't know if that was great for Hero, to be honest. He lost so much. He is at least buying time. Maru's army looked terrifying. Now maybe the armies are going to be a bit more competitive. The Phoenix count is mighty fine on Hero's side. I, I guess it was okay-ish, but definitely not more than that. Hero at this point obviously needs time because his army at the moment, one Colossus, five Zealots, that's not good enough. He needs a whole lot more than that. It looked like that should have been Hero losing this game. That looked like it was impossible for it to go the way that it did, but Maru wasn't able to get on top of the second and third Colossus. They managed to get back into the corner. The Zealot warp in was clutch as hell and allowed Hero's Colossus to get enough damage to kind of equalize the value. Still, I do think Maru is absolutely ahead right now. Uh, and oh, the Widow Mine. Oh, okay, okay. That was very scary. Oh, there's another Widow Mine behind this, though. That ah, could have been a lot worse. That is so many Marauders right now. He needs Disruptors. Yep, I, I, would I would love a second Robo on the side of Hero. And I, I know that Robos are expensive and he's not crazy rich, but with just a couple gateway units, one Robo unit at a time, I'm afraid that that's not going to cut it. Hero needs something that's a bit more powerful, and it's not going to be easy to connect with your Purification Novas against a man like Maru as Maru guns down another Phoenix, stims forward with a couple of Marines. I'm concerned. I mean, you said like you felt Hero was supposed to lose the game there in the end. It kind of went okay, but it was Hero who made that choice. Yeah. He saw Maru leave. Maru didn't know where Hero's army was, and Hero's just like, hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to walk into your natural. And I'm like, but, but why exactly? And Hero's like, well, we're about to find out. It's going to be hell or glory, <laughs> baby. I don't want anything in between. And in the end, he kind of gets something in between. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah. Well, I don't know what just happened. Obviously, it's a crazy series. These two guys feeling the pressure as well. I mean, they traveled all the way from Korea to Atlanta. You're playing a game five. Hero doesn't want to have that feeling of, I was up to zero and I'm going to lose the series. And Maru doesn't want to have another early exit overseas. Overall, I agree with your sentiment that the game looks good for Maru. But if there is one man who can make Protoss units look better than they are, it's definitely Hero, as he just finds weird ways to win certain games. That he does. He's going to try it now. There are so many EMPs available, though. And with the Phoenixes being a pretty core component of this army, there's no way Hero in his right mind could go for that. But 
I have a new nickname for him. I've said it for a while, the Mad Scientist. Sometimes he just does things. And we saw it before. Oh, there are a lot of ghosts clumped up on that watchtower. The EMPs could be deadly. They do get a big connection. Guardian Shield's gonna get popped. The Widow Mines, though, will make engaging into this scary. And Maru just takes some decent trades and gets on out. What Hero is very good at, I feel like, is scaring the Terran quite yeah. a few times. So they keep on stimming. They stim, they stim, they stim. And obviously, you don't overstim your army if you're Maru. But you do drain the Metavex like no tomorrow. And then finally, the big fight takes place as we only have three Metavex out. Like, I, I guess that is what makes Hero Hero, where he's just like, Hey, I'm here, I'm just kidding. Hey, I'm here, I'm just kidding. And then finally, as a Terran player, you're like, All right, I had enough, I just want to fight. Then you can't even really properly heal your units anymore. As we do have that second Robo. I mean, it's, it's crazy how much respect Maru gave Hero in the last two minutes, where Maru's army was the better one, but Hero just says, nope, I'm here, I'm gonna pretend that I really oh. wanna fight. He's gonna try to maybe drag a my shot above the Terran army, but that did not work out, and Hero honestly did not get a whole lot there, but he does have Disruptors on the way. Yeah, I looked at those Widow Mines, and that's exactly what he tried to do. Somehow, they neither dragged on the army or hit the Phoenixes super hard. We are gonna see, once again, Hero, he's just, he's got all the initiative, even though Maru's army has been stronger for so much longer. SCV's being pulled. Maru is terrified of Hero yeah. in this game number five. We've got the Disruptor here. The SCV's leading the charge. There's the Sim. Disruptor shot, Ooh. center mass. Boom, baby. Maru is gonna try and get in on top of this army. The Vikings do shred the Colossus, and there's a lot of bio left over, but the War Prism saves the one Colossus in the back. Disruptor shot from the backside. Gets a not bad connection on the tail end. The supplies are kind of close. Zealots reinforcing into the fight. And there's no medevac energy. You said it best, Brody. He cannot heal up his army. And it's going to somehow come out at even supplies. But I think Maru might be able to clean up everything. Well, I don't know. The Marauders are very low on HP. Oh, and a couple of extra Zealots is going to be it's... good enough. What a fight between these two. In game five, guys, 99 supply against 98 supply when it's all said and done. But what we do know is that obviously Maru lost a bunch of SCVs yes. to make that fight that close. And Hero now has that double robo. Is working at two mighty fine upgrades at the same time. Has the confidence to even warp in a fifth base. Like... I, I want to say that that was overall a victory for Hero. Obviously, kudos to Mara for keeping a couple of the expensive Vikings alive towards the end and saving one or two of the ghosts. But yeah, that went about, I think, as good for Hero as it could have gone. Yeah, I think so. I think so as well. Uh, and I love what Hero is doing right here. He's recognized that Maru is not anticipating a switch back into Colossus. He's going up to four Colossus right now. He also did whittle down the ghost count a little bit. Oh, that disruptor shot on the watchtower. Very close to a big connection, but Maru will get out of there. I, uh, man, I, I really want to double down on the heart rate monitor thing because I feel like these guys have got to be way up there. This is such a high tension game, but 3-2 about to complete for Hero. That is going to swing the upgrades back in favor of the Protoss player once again. What a series between these two. It's really fun to watch, and obviously it's nerve-wracking for both of the guys. Plus three attack, and indeed, and plus three armor are about to finish up. Maru says, all right, well, instead of fighting straight up, why don't I go ahead and go for an old-fashioned drop? And that is risky as well, because there are stalkers all over the shop. Some of them will blink, and they will pick off one of these manifacts, but that was an empty one, so crisis averted. I'm a bit concerned for Maru that we now have somebody buy units in the middle of nowhere. Ooh. It can work out great, right? Because sometimes you just uh, magically get a dream flank as the Terran, but it the can observer. also be a total disaster if you're forced to fight with only half of your army. The Observer sees exactly where those medevacs are. Unfortunately for Hero, he's not able to punish, but it does let him know that Maru might take a little bit of time to readjust this army. Scan will come on down, not able to get the Observer. The counter blink from Hero pushes those Vikings away. Army supplies are so dead even, but we do have Hero with that one upgrade advantage now. Yep. I love how Hero is this aggressive, even though he's got more bases, he's got some room to potentially still max out. But he just says, no, nope, I believe in my army. I believe that this is the place where I need to be. As he gets the Widow Mine, gets a couple of the uh, STVs as well. And Maru once more, like, it's going to be in so much trouble. It's going to be a very difficult fight for Maru. This could very well be the end for the man from Onside Gaming, as I think Hero has Maru right where he wants, as long as he can keep a couple of these Robo units alive and calm down these Vikings. Huge disruptor shot there on the tail end of the fight. Another one coming on in, grabs a couple ghosts. The Vikings clean up the Colossus. 
And this will be a pushback coming in from Maru, but the SCV count, he's down so many workers right now. Maru must kill Hero right now, but Maru is already had the army supply caught back up to him. Hero is in such a good position to deny the reverse sweep to advance onto the next round. Maru is on his last legs. How does Hero have no gas when he had the rich Vespian guys? And by the way, that's a bit confusing, but we're gonna wipe in a couple of Zealots, and that's obviously not a bad thing because Maru doesn't have a lot of things that are great against Zealots anymore. Has a few Marines showing up, has one or two kills. He's gonna try to make a few more Widow Mines, but by pulling the SCVs over and over again, these fights that look even are not even. They are wins for Hero because Hero is just like, oh, cool, you lost a bunch of SCVs again. He's gonna now gonna potentially get on top of one of the last important mining bases and like, how is Maru gonna get a fifth base under these current circumstances it just seems impossible for Maru to get his hands on another mineral line a he doesn't even have the SCVs for it and B he can't pro possibly protect it no he cannot and these disruptors they don't have a great answer even just taking out widow mines at this it's point it's great yeah it opens up the opportunity to just continue to siege this base force out stims. Now the medevacs are not as big of an issue. Uh, Hero, eh, that was a little bit of an optimistic disruptor. We can say that. But he is just in such a commanding position right now. Surprisingly, we don't have Hero committing hard, but it is hard to know exactly what the game state is right now. Resources lost is only about, oh, what is that, 1,700 in favor of uh, Maru here, but Hero, it's more of a whimper than a bang, but he will take the series. Maru is not in position. Hero advances onto the next round and knocks out one of the greatest GSL players of all time. The reigning 